Hello everybody and welcome. This is Tavo DRC of Cross by the Unity. We're doing apostolic teaching. That means servant leader, lowercase a, such as Apostle Paul, who was a trailblazer, a spiritual colonist planner, and he served the churches. He was also the off-scouring of the world, the dung to people. That means he didn't take himself too seriously. It wasn't self-righteous. It was just a declaration of his call to to birth new ideas, revelations from the Lord in his own calling. Everybody can have a different calling and complement, collaborate like I try to do. I'm going to mention the word submission. It was never a big deal growing up. My father was a Baptist pastor. He was very respectful. He didn't have the law. He wasn't back under the law of teaching about you better be submitted. You know, everybody watching to see if you're submitted. That type of cult spirit was not, you know, legalism, that popular accepted doctrine under the law. My father was a, a, a friend to people. He wasn't his, their overseer, their slave master. He got along with all colors of people, all sizes, all incomes, all races. And that's what I want to model him, honor him in Cross by the Unity and many people like you. We're trying to paint a portrait of Christ in the first church. Christ who went about doing good in Acts 10.38. He was in an authority that checked on everybody. I, you know, are you submitting to me today? Are you submitting under the, you know, apostles? Our th no, no. That is what we got going, though, too many places. So we're trying to defrag that old-timey thinking from back in the, maybe back in the day. Somewhere it came down the pike in our country, and it surely is that submission doctrine. I was never around it growing up, and my parents weren't people-pleasing. And I think the fear of getting accused that you're not submitted in those groups breeds maybe people-pleasing or trying to curry people's favor, get in good with people, get, you know, that's working it. So that's not organic. Jesus Christ was from the Middle East. If we study Jesus in his, in his relationships, when he was alive in ministry, you can see his leadership style with all kinds of people, all kinds of beliefs, all kinds of races, genders, males and females, demonic, Romans, little kids. And we want to read Jesus for ourselves in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when he was ar around, you know, on earth before his uh, resurrection. And we want to see how he acted and e reacted with everybody, how he acted how he reacted in every scene, and that will tell you he was not under the law, he was not a big boss, he was not the supreme overseer and demanding everybody do his bidding. He was equally respectful to males and females, old and young, and little kids as well. And so that's why I love to think about the real Jesus, not the negative Jesus, not the legalistic. You know, I guess you'd say before... Paul got saved, really saved. He used to be an LP flamethrower, an accuser under the law, watching everybody. You know, the sign of a Pharisee of the law is, I'm going to catch you misbehaving. I've got you. We saw you. I heard that. And that tone of voice, that false teaching. So Jesus never rebuked anybody. He never jumped anybody in public. He never did anything that was uh, violent or demeaning. But he did stand up and rise up and man up three times at least, only to address in public without hiding, without being snaky, undermining, without accusing. He openly rebuked the Pharisees of the God's own house who were in charge of the temple, the Hebrew Pharisees of the time. And he grew up around them, but he wasn't under them in the fact that he saw when he grew up when he turned to a man, he saw what the system had become about perks, power, position, their favor, and keeping the, you know, it wasn't representation of the father, the relationship like he came to portray. So the word submission in the Old Testament was one thing. It brings word curses and bias and, you know, I saw you and hypocrites and all those things. But mutual submission is what the first church had. And that's what I teach Jesus Christ is the example, how he acted and reacted with men and women. 
And then in Paul, the next big voice who wrote two-thirds of the Bible, submission, Paul writes for all of us in community. It says everyone mutual submitting in the fear of the Lord, mutual submission in the fear of the Lord. Now that's chain of command. Back in the garden before the fall, it was chain of command, males and females to have order. So I was raised Baptist, you know, and I'm, I'm all kinds now, Pentecostal, Baptist, you name it. And we teach mutual submission in the fear of the Lord to everybody. And then when you are in your own group, you ha you're the leader of the group, you set up your rules, all that. So I looked up to make sure because of all the submission teaching, I, you know, they're church hoppers, they're, you know, they're not submitted, therefore we're going to black bomb and accuse them. Oh, listen, I went through that. I had never been around it, that evil eye stuff. I had never. So it got my attention. I thought, whoa, let me study this doctrine. And it's huge. Just It's Book of Acts. But we respect the people, but we're trying to deliver false teaching that accuses witch watching and is an assignment from the devil to make going to church hazardous, painful to your health, more like Paul from such turn away, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 type of fruit. Wow, the last day's peril. You can read it for yourself. All right, so I'd never been around submission until it sort of targeted me and many others where I used to live in Virginia. After the LP, you know, after I moved to a county where I'd been in more of the city and suburbs, and we moved to the county, and that rural type were back into the law legalists, and they started to peg me, the female. They do it for females. They were all white. The female white picking, you know, the accusing that you're, you know, watching, never speaking, just assuming reading you, and that started the whelp studies. I just put a big article on TCL Leader dot com tcl leader uh, dot com which is the maven of apostolic theology about the whelp evaluation the whelp uh, analysis is it true or not and i go into what a whelp is that type of false religion on good people many good people now they're poor me good people but anyway so submission is i wanted to make sure about am i wrong and here the female you know god is allowing this female to do it of all people because this triggers the lp it's just triggering to ministers who are in the false you know the law and so that's why i can teach it back when i can stand on my head and turn around three times and still teach it all right? they've gotten me so much i had to study it i did all right so I googled, well, I chat A-I-G-P-T. I wanted to make sure objectively, all right, Tavo was all the church, starting with Jesus, the apostles, Paul, first church offices in Ephesians offices, was all the people in family, even in marriage, males and females, marriage, were they all mutually submitted in the fear of the Lord? And it said, yes. They were all mutually submitted in the fear of the Lord, chain of command, no big boss, no authoritarians. But then I asked to make sure, I said, but when did authoritarians and totalitarians come into the churches, the big bosses, and the ones that talk like that? Not persuasive authority, not servant leader, but authoritarians. And the chat GPTAI said to me, they came in later. It was all servant leadership, Ephesians 5.21, like Paul writes, until the later influences of Rome and Greece, Hellenism, came into the churches. And that's when totalitarianism and that when authoritarianism came into the churches. But it's big today. You know, back in the day when the 80s on, when different movements came in, the, the spirit-filled movements, I was there to study the body, TV-affected ministry. And they used to teach, and they still do, teach on the authority of the believer. And it was right. However, many people have taken that, especially the submission types. And now it's the authoritarian control of the believer, <laughs> mostly men and their people that they delegate to assign, you know, to target people keep track make a <laughs> it's just gotten to be so much it's more like second timothy three one through five from such turn away if they measure you can see it by their fruit god bless you he loves you there's no in crowd and out crowd with the lord unless you don't love him you know of course there's the out crowd right there but in the churches it should be equal god bless you Bye bye